Hello and welcome to the Thursday show here on the Frontline Gaming Network. My name is Paul Murphy, your host. I'm joined by Adam Camilleri. Hi everybody, how you doing? And Dustin Hinshaw. Hello again everybody, happy to be here. Ah, you're like a substitute teacher. I am a substitute teacher. I did make that bald signal gif as well. I sent it to Adam, he needed to see it. I, I, I told you I'd do it. <laughs> for the folks that are already in the chat, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for the comments. Uh, for everybody that's going to be joining us later, you know, look, we're going to hear this is your weekly tournament rundown. So we're going to be talking about the upcoming tournaments, what you're going to see there uh, over the weekend, talking about the big ones or some small ones. Heck, let us know if you want us to talk about your show or, or your tournament coming up. Uh, we may plug it on the, on the show. Uh, yeah. This weekend, though, or sorry, this week, we're going to talk about team, a team tournament, a giant team tournament. Australia. Yeah, 120 players out of the lovely Perth, Western Australia, the WATC, that's the Western Australian Team Championship, run every year. 120 players, six man teams, that's 20 uh, six player teams. Uh, phenomenal event. And uh, yeah, it's going to be some juicy, juicy stuff to come out of that. You um, don't. Unfortunately- Sorry, go Paul. No, no, I was just say you don't want to miss this. If you're if you're not watching on video, you might want to check us out because we're going to have some stunning graphics and visuals. Oh, to show you. stunning. <laughs> They're gorgeous. We have, we have the polarities. We have Adam's uh, raggedy scroll, and we have some beautiful down no, pairings pie charts. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just putting in the hard yards here, guys. <laughs> Look, sometimes I like to really uh, cement the fact that we are doing this uh, independent indie, you know, <laughs> it's a bootstrap <laughs> operation over here, and uh, we showcase it no better than, uh, than what's going to be in this episode. All right now, but seriously, uh, thank you. If this is your first time here, please consider uh, liking, sharing, and subscribing, making some comments, joining in the chat if you're watching us live. Uh, it means a lot to us. If you're listening to this later on one of like the podcast aggregators or whatever, uh, leave us a five star review. Let us know. Again, you can either mention your tournament that's upcoming in the five star review, and that may increase the ability for us to talk about it uh, coming up later on. That's all the plugging that I'm going to do. Uh, mm-hmm. for us in the Frontline Gaming Network. But sincerely, thank you for joining us. I missed last week. I hope y'all missed me. I miss being here. Let's jump right into it. 120 I, players. I did not do a good job covering for you last week, Paul. Don't do that to me again. You That's did fine. He The only time he stumbled a little bit was at the beginning because he literally said, I don't know what to do right now. And <laughs> this is the Paul bit. It's the Paul bit. This and is no what Paul does. does. I don't know what to do. No one does it like Paul does it. So <laughs> you just yeah. start talking and don't stop until uh you know it's time to take a long breath or whatever. Oh th- again, yeah, thanks for the folks joining in to the chat already. Uh, so t- Adam, this is like in your neck of the woods. What's well, the caliber of player like? What what can we expect from this event? Now I'll tell you, we don't have a list to talk about, but we do have, I believe, team composition, and then we're going to talk yeah. about team tournaments and specifically like getting ready for them, what it takes, what it takes to be part mm-hmm. of a team in the Warhammer Forty Thousand setting. So this one went a little bit different for us um, on the because we do we have a, we have a, a pretty loose ish format for how we talk about things. We talk about the, the quick and dirty stats of the meta of the event, what lists are in attendance, what factions. But with a with a teams event, especially with a six player team event, where every book can only be taken once, that means only one space marine per six per six man team, six person team rather. Um, so you know that means only one Eldar. Uh, sorry, Eldari only means one. You know, craft worlds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Sorry. A, I said wrong. One, one Drakari, one Harlequins, one Eldari. Eldari uh, that was, I was going to ask that, yeah. So yeah, yeah. For, for Space Marines too, you can take Dark Angels, Blood Angels, or is it just... No. Ooh, Single. So they, 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 okay. Codex okay. is okay. one Codex. Well, good to know. Yeah. Otherwise, you could do Cult of Strife. <laughs> yeah. And then you could do... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and get, yeah, and yeah. I like that actually specifically so because you could show up and, and everyone takes, you know, all Marines and it, it skews things. Exactly. So, But, we, you know, we talk about what you want to see at your format. You could easily also... I could see people allowing the other side, a Blood Angel, yep. a Space Wolf, a Dark Angel, you know, and I've definitely then a, seen that. a Death Watch and then a Codex mm. Astartes. I mean, that that's, how you know, what we see in some mm. tournaments. So that would be and cool absolutely- too, but they're crafting what they want to see here. Exactly. Yeah, this is a bit of this is a bit of cultural crafting, and of course, it's following in the footsteps of you know the Australian team t- championships here, which follows after the WTC format. Um, I would point it out that I don't have the guns out today. I'm not wearing a tank. That's because I'm wearing my WATC shirt from a couple of years ago that was lovingly given to me by Captain Redbeard, who was my WTC captain for 2019 on the Australian team. So I'm repping him today. Hello, my brother. It's also his birthday today. Happy birthday, Peter Patel. Oh, nice. Song goes out to you. He's, his birthday. team's in attendance at the event as well. But so, yeah, when we went down to, to break down some of the stats, I didn't want to pull out any, I didn't really want to pull out lists because it's, 
all, all these lists in a teams event, like, as you gentlemen will know, are built to a purpose. They're all built mm-hmm. for a purpose. And um, to talk about them in a vacuum like that would, probably wouldn't do them justice. So instead, I'd, I pulled out my raggedy scroll and I went through as many of the, li- of the teams as I had time and put them through a couple of different metrics. And we'll talk about those in a moment. But first and foremost, let's, let's break down this event a little bit. So this is being run by the amazing um, team from Offset Gaming, that being Emma and Mike Basque, who are Warhammer Heroes. They've actually got that accolade from Games Workshop directly. Very prestigious. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all the amazing work they do in Western Australia, they really are kind of the foundation of the competitive scene over there. And every, they've, they've been running events in and out at all different levels, like entry-level stuff, 1,000-point stuff, teams, doubles, you know, ultra-competitive 2,000 points. Oh, build points. that community up. I like that. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're wonderful community people. Um, and they're doing great works here. And now, uh, so what's interesting about the Western Australian community uh, is that for those who don't know the geography of Australia, please go jump in, search Western Australia, and just see how far it removed it is. But from is the rest West of really Australia. east for me? Like, is it is it still the same section of the map? Because I'm in North America. Is West really yeah. the the, it, it, the right so side? It, it's the left side of the the country. The, the left. Side? So if you look at Australia, it's the left side of the country. Right, the bottom in the bottom left hand corner is Perth, and it's a big. It's like almost half the about a third of the country is in that state, and you know ninety five percent of it's desert. Um, but that it's cheaper to fly from Perth to Singapore to to where I live in Melbourne on the the east coast than it is to fly direct. It's that kind of crazy. It's that far removed. Um, because of that, they have a very interesting meta, and it um it develops along. Uh, they're a very strong, very strong um state when it comes to the national championships in Australia. Coming, uh, they they usually podium. They podium in, in in the modern era of the game in eighth and ninth edition. They're podiumed or you know come close to winning it the last couple of years. So a very strong when it comes to the team formats, and they invest in it very heavily. Um, do we want to we want to go into quick and dirty stats or uh, Dustin? What's your experience? You're you're a member of Team Canada, is that correct? I am, yeah. I went to WTC in uh, Serbia two year, two years ago. Oh my god, it's been so long now. I went to the last WTC, which was two or three <laughs> years whenever ago. Whenever that was. Whenever that <laughs> was. I always say last year, but it was actually like two years ago. So I have been a part of it. I have experienced it. It is an amazing experience. I, I go to Can Hammer team tournament every single year. It's up here in Canada because that's another amazing team tournament. That's that's actually what got me into competitive 40k in general, to be honest. Mm. But the first time I went to a Can Hammer team tournament, because the team events are just, they are the best part of 40 40k like i bar none i got love singles and i love going just to meet people and talk and play myself team events are they're they're where it's at 100 percent. if you've never been to a warhammer team event you've got to do it yeah well you do actually yeah i don't want to i don't want to truncate that point at all yes this is amazing we're going to kind of celebrate that a little bit later on in the show but let me give some shout outs to folks in the chat captain mazungo thank you so much uh I think walking up down the stairs since I work from home now is uh, maybe paying off. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. And Wolf Priest Carl, I'm still working on that catchphrase. you got to tune in to the next time do commentary, and maybe we'll, we'll, we'll uh, wing one out. Well, Paul, you're no slouch you're no slouch on the team's events then either. You've crushed some ATCs over there, haven't you? Love it. And actually Adepticon, uh like best sport twice in a row, one Adepticon nice. team tournament. Uh yeah, it's the it's going going and experiencing this thing with your buddies and then the journey that leads up to an event like this. It is it, I on one hand, it's more difficult. On one, on some areas, it's more rewarding. Uh, but I mean, you, it takes different paths. It's just different, you know. It's a, mm. it's a lot different than a singles competition. And you share in the victories, and you also share in the burdens of the of the struggles and losses, you know. Uh, but yeah, let's let's talk about what, what are we what are we going to see team wise at this at this event. So st- we'll, we'll go to the, the meta of it so far. And so when we talk about the quick and dirty stats of the meta, as in of the factions represented, keep in mind that each team can only take this faction once. So in all reality, we're looking at 20 teams. And so think about a three, that's 120 players, but only 20 teams. So e.g. there can only be a max of 20 of anything. So literally... If you see ten, if you see ten of a faction, that means half the teams have taken that. Yeah. Ten of the twenty teams have taken that faction. Running down from the top, um, and for the and from right. the top, are we going we, for the? I'm going to guess on the most represented. Okay, I, I want to hear it. All right, all right. Go all for right. Drukari. Yep. Uh, okay. Adeptus, okay. Keep going. Adeptus Mechanicus. Yep. Uh, Adeptus Soritas. Yep. Mm-hmm. Blood Angels. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, that was okay. You just that was that was, what you it, it was so good until you did that. <laughs> I actually so, I wanted to lead y'all along. So, <laughs> um, Adeptus Astartes, the Adeptus Astartes. I'm I'm calling it a super faction now because there's just that many supplements. But in we this, know it's Blood Angels, though. 
It, well, uh, Dark Angels is the most represented Space Marine faction of this. It's 14 <laughs> out of 20 out of 20 teams. 14 of them took uh, that. Space that Marines. actually doesn't surprise me. They're doesn't a perfect. Surprise me they're a perfect defender, like an absolute and, perfect defender. It, well, yeah, that's exactly right. Dark Angels are a perfect defender, but they also come in a lot of different flavors because there is the and the defensive skew you can do with them can also be have the the other side of the coin being the aggressive side. And what mm-hmm. Paul assumed would would be Blood Angels is actually Black Templars and and, and White Scars in this iteration. Yes, Black Templar are actually there, and and they there's other factions like Death Guard too. And I want to talk about that for a second. Uh, give some uh, uh, Tomodachi Express. Uh, Nurgle Matthew, uh, like my toes in there, uh, in the chat, all kind of <laughs> folks representing. Uh, thank you. That was a little uh, creepy. Yeah. That was, well, <laughs> they they named themselves that. <laughs> you know, I just read what's on the teleprompter. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I want to ask you guys, um, uh, Adam and Dustin, for some of these factions represented, like say Death Guard or whatever, do you think that someone looked out into their crew of folks and said, okay, hey, uh, we don't have a Dark Angels players, but we do have a, De- a Death Guard player. Get in there. Like, mm-hmm. do, you, do you think some choices yeah. were made uh, well, based just, just on what the, what the factions were available to them or what maybe that player was good at playing? You got Dustin, mate? Yeah, for sure. So... I actually think that this is a, a huge thing that people need to remember on this because you can only take one of every faction and faction experts are a thing. So even if you have a Dark Angels player, sometimes you'll want to take the Death Guard player instead because their list and their play style just kind of plays more into the defensive style or for a defender, or even, even an attacker, depending on what kind of list you need to kind of round out the team because you're going to need, so with the six person team, you need two defenders, I think, maybe three. I think it's two because eight, you need three defenders. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one though. Well, so that that's actually up for debate in ninth edition as well, and so that for a couple yeah, of reasons, go and we're we're going to go into those. You want, you um, want five yeah. defenders? Is what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, technically you can. Technically, you have five defenders and yeah. one ass kicker, and you you know you, you hold up, you do pretty well. I um, think that's how I would structure it in this case, and that, mm. I think that we also see that reflective in the list if a couple of these factions weren't able to pull double duty. So a couple of these factions yeah. can actually play double duty, and we're seeing that play out. I think with what we've seen, it, it's it's that middle to to bottom. That middle third to the bottom half that I think is the is the most out here. Yeah, yeah, spot on. And it, it's interesting to see because, like you guys, what you guys are saying about the Marines. If you looked at the total microcosm of all the factions in representation, you can draw mm-hmm. some parallels. But it's very easy to look into the Marines and draw those parallels because they are essentially the the blank slate. They are the vanilla ice cream, and you can add the topping as you please. You know, ice magic, some marshmallows, mm-hmm. hundreds and thousands, whatever you please. Um, but you know, when you look at these lists, Dark Angels screams defensive to me. Whereas you know, two Black Black Ten Plus Three White Scars screams aggressive. There's also already an offset five defensive lists five offensive lists and then you get some interesting ones like death watch what is i had to look at the death watch list because what is death watch is it a defensive list is it msu when you break up all your kill teams is it um is it more durability based because you've got a bunch of storm shields and things um, and, and you mean and, which direction did they take because there are yeah, tools to be either well, it, it or. can do all of them it could definitely yeah. do all of them in fact it could even be made a list to do either or like you don't actually Maybe we should actually point this out to people because I don't know if all the listeners that are listening to this actually know what we're talking about when we say defender attacker list. Maybe That's we should kind of we go actually we into what that means. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just went, to, we went over a whole lot on that. And I think we're talking a bit of jargon for people that aren't familiar with this. So maybe we should go into that a little bit. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay. So for, from a defensive point of view, we're talking about lists that are put down and it's going to be taking two lists from the enemy team that are going to be put against them. So a defender list is something that usually can take either can take any list get points against it, take away bad matchups from other people, or even just needs a good table. Like the, the 13 armature list was one of those lists that had to be a defender, which wasn't the best idea, but it meant it had to have a list. that wasn't like heavy on terrain because it needed to be able to maneuver. It needed to maybe not have force and things like that. Defender lists are lists that can get points generally aren't too mobile, but just sit there, take their, take the hit against the bad matchup for the rest of the team. So the rest of the team can get good matchups on good maps. And that's why we're talking about dark angels being so good at that because dark angels have so many built to the like stubborn defiance, while we stand, they have so many good options for secondaries to get points without even interacting with their opponent. They can yeah. go into any matchup and get points. That's what I mean they by just, defender. Exactly right. They're they're either gonna stop their opponent, which is either a, which is a big you know crushing list. That's mm-hmm. that's a plan for the opponent is for them to go out and get the team points. And you're putting a defender in there who has the best chance of stopping them in their track or stopping them from reaching their ultimate goal. Yes. Even if that is just stopping them from getting a max win, you know, taking one or two or five points off them. It's also a thing we should break down and talk about how team events. And I can tell you, I know for a fact this team event will be using a 20-0 system, and uh, that oh, yeah. breaks down. 
um, that breaks down the differential between the scores. And so you need to beat somebody by 50 or 51 points in order to get a max yes. point win, a 20 to zero. And the difference in the metrics between winning um, your opponent losing by that's a, a combined score that's, yes. that's yeah combined across all all tables that ratio of whatever uh points mm. differential mm. different so you can before and that defender list can do it in a couple of different ways it, you can be a horde you can you know take terminus Est or tyrion or something and just soak up board position as in slow them down in their, their generating of points or you can do what dark angels do which is generate their own points to such an extent that you can never out distance their points total by enough to get a huge win now a lot of the time especially into some of these more powerful things things like the death guard lists i just talked about things like the, the those tyrannies and those guard and those um dark angels list especially the dark angels list is falling off uh, almost wholesale competitively but they have don't, aren't really getting first and second places anymore. Sometimes they're getting thirds and fourths and they're cracking the top five. But it's been a long time since they, they got a, you know, a, a consistent podiums. And uh, But in teams events, they have a phenomenal purpose about mm-hmm. them. And the same can be said, exactly the same thing can be said for knights, for a lot of death guard lists, yep. for a lot of custodies lists as well. They really get this injection of purpose back into them where they're like, hey, I don't have to win this game. I just have to be me. I just have to be a big old Death Guard Terminator I think list. Custodes yeah. are going to do actually really well in this list. I, I, mean, yeah. I, would, I would imagine the teams with good Custodes players are going to r- catapult towards the top. I can tell you, you know, with um, like in the ATC and, you know, this, and things like that, is that I would often go go into it as I'm, I'm the sacrificial lamb. I'm going to go out there yeah. and if I just mm-hmm. get, if I got 100 points over the course of the tournament, I knew that my team was going to win. And, yeah. and so the that's the same type of mentality that a lot of the, that a lot of these teams that are taking these in with good players is I can take this list, which is solid as a rock, literally solid as a rock. Uh, and if I can squeeze out more points than my opponent thinks I'm going to, or my opponents think I'm going to, then we have an ultimate advantage in this, in this mm-hmm. team. Event. Mm, agree. Yeah, that's the big st- too. Are there any of the stats breakdown to actually surprise you guys? For me, for me, it is the custodies. They stand out. Oh, yeah. They, I, I think we were offline when you said that, too. You got to mention again how many custodies were actually in this. Uh, so, yeah, a quick quick rundown again, quickly from the top. Uh, 11 Admech, 13 Drakari, uh, 8 Sisters, 8 Orcs, 7 Grey Knights, 9 T-Suns, and 9 Custodies. Now, nine. Those are two the, the Thousand Suns sh- shocks me. The, the, yeah. and the reason it shocks me is because I don't know that if folks have cracked that that nut yet. I mean, it, I think you can go with, you know, look, we don't see the list. And I'd love to see what they've taken taken to see how aggressive they plan on being or are they also going brick well, heavy so i've actually i actually broke down a lot of those lists um i've got some more metrics we're going to switch to in probably a couple of minutes and i was looking into those to see what style they were and i had a lot of trouble classifying them are they msu are they durability based are they horde based because of the different metrics they work upon because a lot of them are this hero hammer-esque style like mm-hmm. and wait, i don't i don't have a category for that i, I don't no, have a category they're, for they're that trying yet. to get it's the that's the cabal style they're yeah, they're rolling yeah, yeah. Cabal's cabal's style, deep. Yeah. But you guys think about, you guys think about what a a psychic powerhouse army does in in the pairings matchups in the matchups for your opponent. Oh, you're playing you're playing Necrons. Oh, have some T Suns, mate. You can't stop them doing whatever they want to you. They're just gonna do, you know. And they're just gonna get turns and turns and turns of mileage. The same can be said um, for uh, for a bunch of other matchups. I mean, even knights knights struggle really bad with those psychic matchups, especially with bodyguard rule defending you from some of their big shooting things. You take a Castellan and you're like, I got to shoot through. All these rubrics, and if, if I can, if there's only one of them I can't see, well, I get to do nothing. That that pretty bad. Um, and so yeah, there's a lot of really cool things T Suns can do in the pairings. And Grey Knights uh, pose the same problem, but for, for different reasons. And the reasons there might, uh, the reasons I think there aren't as many um, Grey Knights players is because um, as as T Suns rather is because Grey Knights you can you can have a, a Marines list that does similar things to what Grey Knights do. You can have what they do already in your list in your lineup, but you can't get what T Suns do anywhere else, which is that erroneous over the top mortal wound dump that's really hard to quantify in appearance. You're like he's either going to kill like only five my five infiltrators or my infiltrators and my vanguard vets and my and my blade guard this turn you know it's really mm-hmm. hard to quantify what they're going to do to you so they're always a bit of an x factor and i love that we're seeing a, a prevalence of them i think it's really exciting yeah no well, it makes sense to see that i, I actually think that uh, thousand suns being higher higher represented than the great knights makes a lot of sense because i think that the thousand suns actually have better secondary choices overall I agree. I think they actually can score better on a on a more consistent basis than Grey Knights. Grey Knights are still very strong, but in a team event, you want consistency in your secondaries and your scoring. I think Thousand Suns do that, and like you said, there are some pairings that just that you can't quantify them against Thousand Suns, so it's really hard to pair against mm. them. 
some They're of these nice. teams Sorry. are going are some of these teams are going big brain on it, right? So which mm. which part of these teams you know have the thousand suns just because you know it's the shiny new thing and they uh they want to maybe inject that bit of unfamiliarity into their event to yep. maybe pick up some games. Uh not, not you know, not saying gotcha hammer, but they, you know, not everyone can tech against it. And mm. and if they you, you don't prepare for that level of psychic onslaught or you don't prepare for you know whatever you know the things that they can do. Uh, but also, which ones are thinking that I can put my thousands of sons against the custodes list? And even though what yeah. are the I know the custodes are a little bit, uh, they get that save versus mortal wounds, right? Uh, they, uh, they get something yeah. that, that makes mm-hmm. them a little bit durable, it's but not it's enough. not enough. It no, may be enough know. against a couple of Space Marines li- librarians, but it is not enough uh, against the thousand sons. And spot on. I was about to say this. So, uh, and Paul, perfect segue. Um, Defensive 40k is, is the best way to play teams 40k. If you start mm-hmm. all your baseline lists at having a defensive base, with yep. the exception of the top stuff in the middle, like Drakari and Admech can just be to be whatever they want because they're just that, <laughs> that potent. Um, but when you start all your lists at a baseline level of defense, you look at things that can really get around other people's defensive skews. And the best example, uh, Kelsey just popped it up in the chat and Paul just said that the other one, T-Suns are there to punish other people's Custodes and other people's Dark Angels lists. Mm-hmm. Because you, you, wanted, you wanted to be defensive around this one big brick of things. Well, that's just not a metric that works against me. You don't have psychological stuff that can, that yeah. can last. Yeah. So it, when it comes to the psychic phase, well, your thing, your mm-hmm. egg basket is right there and it's time yeah. to... Yeah, right. to, they, they're, they're there to deal with Dark Angels too. Like they, they can deal with it very, very well. Your your one up armor save custody shield guard. Don't I don't care. Your perma transhuman mm-hmm. terminators. I don't care. Just mortals, mortals, mortals. You know, sorry brother. None, none of this. None of the things you built your baseline defense around work yeah. against me. And so yeah. here's the interesting thing because you can have that one T Suns player, and it's only really like one or two lists that 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 T Suns player can't go into. Hundred percent cannot go into. Of course, one sisters. Can you guys think of another one? Black Templar. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes, but no. The, thing is, the five, the five plus, and the auto deny. I still think like a good T Suns player has enough damage to go through that. Like yeah. they this can. New yeah. Book, I well, think has okay. Enough. I, I think you've got you've got to um, at that point you're at least in it, right? But you can do- that what we haven't necessarily mentioned is you can dodge some of these things in in these events. So you know if they have mm-hmm. if they only have one list. So if you put out your list. And then the the opponent gives you two lists to choose from about what you'd like to, f- to face, and they only have one that that is really good at resisting or whatever that what this trick of this army is. Then you pick the other one. So it's the 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 concept is set up to where uh, n- nobody has everything, right? Uh, yeah. But the but the list of the teams that have tr- that have tried to tech into what they can anticipate what they're going to get and fight the most which is this is very tricky uh, are going to have the advantage uh because you have to count on your opponent always making the best move they're going to put out mm. their two best list against you yeah. which is th- theoretically your two worst matchups every single time uh, and that's where we start getting into the uh, the attacker and defender yeah and the intrigue strategy and the process now what's really exciting about t-sons players the same can be said for grain arts and the same can be said for things like knights you know triple bane blade lists hell a lot of tower lists as well they only have one or two really 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 ultra bad and crazy bad pairings like eg t-sons and sisters if you your opponent can only have one sisters player they can only have one in their mm-hmm. lineup so as long as you can get your boy your t-sons boy not into their sisters chances are they're going to get you some points yep. and there are a lot of ways that captains can try and pull out those bad matchups for their opponent like you put in a juicy one for the sisters player to just go in and get a and get a good win over like get a 15-5 then your t-sons gets to go in and get a 20 and all of a sudden you've offset what was going to be a blowout for you but let's let's change tax well, let's look at adam's pigeon scroll because i i did some <laughs> anecdotal let's go to the uh super chart Yes, this is, behold, the majesty of what I did in the 45 (laughs) minutes before this show. I tell you, if you're not watching this on video, you are missing something to behold. It is. I can't, this is, this is like watching the Holy Grail be revealed to me. I cannot, I cannot fathom and explain the awe that I'm in right now of this. Okay, okay. 
I can't so, even read it. I can't. It's, uh, it's too... Usually we go through lists. Usually we break, we pull out some lists. We break down, you know, who's taking what, you know, what, why they're taking this. We talk about the cool things in the meta and stuff. But with this, in a team's event, I didn't want to just like pull out an anecdotal list that could be an attacker or an offender or, or could be whatever. And we just like, oh, this doesn't make sense because it's, you know, we, we're looking through a singles. So I went and looked at team makeups. I looked at what the a team's bringing. And so I put, I put every single team, I, and I, was able, I wasn't able to get through all of them. Apologies, I got through the first, I think, 12 so I've got over half of them done and I put them through three metrics the the top left of these three charts is uh is the list an attacker list an offender list or a misc or, or a tweener between them and usually the the tweeners are the list that can do both I mean space marines a lot of the time can do both they can be an attacker or a defender but usually these the misc the tweeners is reserved for the the armies that get to take an all comers list to a team's event they get to take yeah. the, like a good metal list to a team's event. E.g., your sisters, your Drakari, your Admech. Usually, those yep. they can take whatever list they want, and they can function in either role. Um, but if you look at that, and then then the second one I went through was was this list a skewed list or an all comers list? And so uh, pulling out from that tweener thing, pretty much skewed. Um, uh, define skewed. You mean a list that is teched to one way, like a landslide one way or yeah. the other? Yeah, eighteen yeah, yeah. buggies. 18 buggies, three Telemon Dreadnoughts or with, with two Galatus, you know, stuff like that. Um, the Ultramarines list with all the, the Dreads and the, the, the Contempts and stuff. These are skewed lists, things that are pushing one certain thing in their list. E.g., there's a player who's taking, I think, 60 Gene Stealers. That's a skew list. 60 Hero. Gene Stealers in the Swarm Lord. Hero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolute legend. Uh, and then the third one down below is this: is is this list? Um, what is it leveraging? Is it leveraging an MSU? Is it leveraging durability, or is it leveraging a horde mechanic? And now it's interesting to to look in through that lens and see the breakdowns. And so the six lists, so the six little tabs for each section, and every line is is a different is a different team. And naturally, this was done with Adam Scroll in like forty five minutes. So please, okay, I can me. see Dude, it. it we're joking about too. it, but it's great. I mean, this is stats, and we we love. Oh no, this is stats awesome. Here. Yeah, and so this is this is the stuff that I would uh, do if I was going to a team's event. If I was going to WTC, mm -hmm. these are the things that I would look at. These are the things that I try and pull apart to see where the strengths and weaknesses of each team are. Now, I will tell you right now, um, this is the most I've ever seen in the tweener section. I've never seen um, this this much of a percentage of every team be uh, be able to govern that between mm -hmm. role. Either they can they can be either either. I think that speaks to the strength of some of the factions we have in the game. It, the it really is. It, it's a, it's a lean on the factions themselves of how. Oh, they do have all the all the tools. Well, look, if we were able to get into the list of themselves, I think we'd see some differentiation there. But like you just mentioned a few minutes ago, is there is that there are some factions right now that have all the tools to do either perform either task. They do. And mostly it's interesting to, to know the correlations. Most of the MISC, the tweener roles in the attacker defender also govern the MSU slot. They also in the MSU um slot for what are they msu dribble or horde and it's just that that correlation really speaks to the way you, the way you play ninth edition the way you win ninth edition missions um mm -hmm. dustin does that surprise you at all no it doesn't surprise me that much i i see one team that doesn't have any defenders that surprises me yes i feel like that's that's a that's a that, that that's a risky play but they have three miscellaneous or like the of the tweeners as you call them which means they have three really strong lists of, and three attackers they're going aggressive i feel like they're their uh, tweeners are going to be their defenders and then their attackers are just going to try to get the good matchups to get some extra points but the the tweeners are just they're they're there because they know they're good the players probably very comfortable with them so they know exactly what they're doing with it the seeing one or two hordes in every uh, team, that doesn't surprise me at all. I think having at least one horde on your team is very, very strong because a lot of people do not do not gear to build, beat. They, they don't bring two lists to beat. Well, hordes. my question for Adam is like, did you have a, th a model, model count threshold before you called it a horde? That's a good question. I, I did. It was around 80 infantry. If you were topping out at 80 infantry, uh, I, I was willing to put you either Horde or, or MSU. Uh, usually that means you're not in the durability slot. Durability slot is the stuff like you're spamming termies, custody bodies, um, you know, stuff with three or more wounds and a good save is, is usually mm -hmm. the durable stuff. Or, or vehicle spam, or, or exactly. Oh, um, okay. So, so it's not like 300 Termagods Horde. We're talking like just 80 infantry, non-MSU style. <laughs> 80 yeah, well, Space Marines. Well, 80 Space, space Marines space. actually be, be rough in this situation. It, it is. It is actually. And some of those yeah. are in the Horde stuff because there are a couple of gents who are just taking like 40 intercessors and then a bunch of Vanguard vets. And you're like, well, actually, that's really hard to deal with for some people. Yeah. Um, but what what I found was interesting. So this is stuff that always holds true, I think, in teams. If you look at the, the look at the top left chart, the defensive one, the majority of the lists are in the defensive slot. Yes. The people more often than not, there's there's two or more defensive lists in every six man, every six person team. That holds true for you for what you said before, right, Paul? 
Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. You have, I mean, you, you, that's what, that's bare minimum, I, I think, if you were to, but without just going into it, having a cursory example, you've read the pack a few times, you talked to a couple of people, that's the, that's the makeup of your team you, you go into. First right. Thing. So that's actually I'll, something I'll, I'm curious about too, Adam. If you have, do you, do you know what the terrain is going to be like for this tournament? Is it like WTC style? They have their own style because that actually can affect the style of teams that you bring as well. Well, I know how closely um, the WATC, the ATC follows, and the ATC in Australia, the national competition we have follows the WATC. The WTC. I'm yeah. assuming it'll be WTC terrain. I don't actually okay, know so, for, for a fact. Okay, so pretty heavy, pretty heavy. It'll, it'll, it'll be heavy. It'll be heavy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there'll be a var- there'll be variations, by the way. There'll yes. be um, there'll be uh, two, 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 or as in like two light, Typically, two medium, two dense. Or what you'll see on some, some of these right tables, is the tables will not all be equal. There will be some yeah. more terrain tables to, to a scale of lighter terrain type tables. Yeah. To allow yeah. for certain armies to have an advantage and so in the in the not only are you pairing but there's also a table picking mechanic that's involved with uh, with this yeah. typically i don't know if that's happening here but that is typically what we see in events like this so in, in if i was to if i was to captain a team if, so if you guys were to captain a team for this i'll start with with dustin what would if you were just to anecdotally in a vacuum talk about how many attackers defenders and tweeners you would want to be in your makeup how, what would you like your split to be and my split play. is my split is usually two defenders so I'll, how many how many how many players? Six for this. Six. So actually two of each. Two two defenders, two, two attackers, two, two. two tweeners. Yep. yep. Paul, what would you say? Uh, I'm gonna go with more on the like four defensive sides, but those defensive sides uh are really skewing towards well, see I don't want to complicate the question. I know you ask a very direct question, but it also comes down to what my team player makeup is and they are more comfortable playing. There are there and then there's a situation of sometimes that some of your players on your team, they really think they're good at one thing, but they're actually good at something else. <laughs> yeah, you love know? it. Love yep. it. It's so much fun man- managing your, your personalities is also another factor here. And so I, you know, I, lo- I love the way Dustin described. I think from the people that I know, I would lean more on the uh, the four defender type list with with two of those being about 25, 30, 33% uh, ag- aggressive. Yeah, I, I'd go one attacker, three defender, two tweeners. Um, mostly, I want always want one. I want one supercharged list. Like I want one knight list. I want one triple triple shadow sword. I want one ridiculous. If it goes first versus you, you might just lose because that's the guy when I lose the role to go for, to who has to put up the list first. Mm-hmm. That guy goes up, takes a light table, and makes you run the gauntlet of Am I just going to go second versus this guy on a bowling ball and get smashed? And so mm-hmm. it makes your makes your opposition. It, put, it puts the heat on him, and I, I love See, having that tool. Yeah, I, I get that. that. That makes a lot of sense too. I actually I like having two attackers because I like having the option to say this this is a list that a lot of us don't want to fight against. It's going to give a, be a rough time for all of us except these two guys that are designed to deal with lists like this. So you have to pick yeah. one of these. You don't have a choice. You're fighting one of these. Yeah. So I like it. That's why I like having those two. And Let's I like to... when you're when you're getting towards the end of your stack of like, oh, we're running out of list, but we got all these <laughs> threats. We got we got all these yeah. threats and no answers or whatever. <laughs> I feel like throwing out a having a having a defender later in your stack uh, can sometimes be beneficial. When I mean, look, I know we're getting. I, I'm I'm think I'm I'm probably overthinking it, but I told you I spent no a lot of time thing. in this space, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But after when fatigue starts sitting in, when you're when you're in the you know the last game of the first day and you overdid it, you know, with your with your uh, uh, imbibing or whatever, yeah, you, know, <laughs> you, you wanna. I think you want a little bit of a thing stacked in your favor with a solid list or two that you can maybe rely on. A little bit sloppier play. Having a nice, have a nice champion in your back pocket. I like yeah. it. Yeah, that's. Uh, so we'll try. Should talk about the second of these shots. Oh. Comers. It's almost a fifty-fifty spread. It's almost fifty-fifty. Three oh, oh, lists, three all comers list. Uh, yeah, it's it's almost perfectly three three for the overlong majority. You know, I, I can only assume it would have been the same if I got to do the rest of the teams. But the, that I mean that surprises me a little bit. I think the lo- the more players you add to your team, the more ability you have to screw your lineup. Like if you were to play like in a four person team, the chances are you should take you should take one baller defender and three old, and three just good medalists, right? So yeah, if you bring medalists. thirteen people to this six man team event, you're going to do a lot better. I thought. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> no but I mean it's the format in eight in eight <laughs> mans. You have the ability. <laughs> so in six mans, you can only really push one skew. You can have like you can have oh, here's here's three vehicle lists, and you know some of those are just going to get through the keeper and get some points. You can have you know two or three knights. You know, sorry, two knights. Well, obviously not two, not three. Um, but you know you can you can push out one skew really hard. You can have three horde lists. You have three hard MSUs. But the more players you have in a lineup, you know, in eight man, you can push two or three skews. You can you can 
push two or three different metrics and try and trap different players in different ways. But what uh, what I found was interesting here was that there were so many all comers. I thought I'd be seeing, if I had to think, and it's not it's not too far different to what I was thinking. It'd be four skews to two all comers because that would make sense to how I see the meta at the moment. The two all comers being most likely and any combination of the the top medalists. You know, take your pick of sisters, Drakari, Admec, Orcs. You know, there's your there you can just you can just take an all comers and they're going to be good. And then all the rest, you know, your Necrons, your your Death Guard, your Space Marines, all sitting in the skewed side of things. But I was interested to I see like it. it was fifty fifty. Like, Kelsey in the chat mentions that uh, that a lot of the ninth edition codexes, the ones that are specifically designed, you know, after the release of this edition, are able to function in both roles. Mm-hmm. I mean, to, to degrees, mm-hmm. but some better than others. But there's the, the there's more options in in these new codexes, which I which well, I really like. Well, spot yeah. on. There was a couple of there was actually a couple of sisters lists that were leaning more towards the horde rather than the MSU style. They had uh, larger units and a, even a couple of dudes who had twenty man bricks of sisters. Well, one twenty man brick of sisters. And so I found that quite interesting to to correlate and to categorize. But yeah, I mean that doesn't surprise me. The fact that we've got a, a kind of a fifty fifty split between skewed and all comers. In fact, that was the thing that made some the most sense to me of these three um, breakdowns I did. You, any anything you guys want to mention there? Well, so not with the breakdown specifically, but you did make a comment earlier about oh, some points are going to get through the. Um, min- the mind state uh, of of the the players in this tournament is going to be critical too. I mean, like talking about mm-hmm. just mental um, stamina and durability, because some people like there are some teams that are designed to like, yo, hey man, you're gonna get the worst matchup every single time that we play, and you've got to just chew that glass and make the most of it. And mm. you gotta you gotta have a discussion with your team and your teammate and know that they're capable of that when they're going into it, or that has to influence your, your strategy for pairing. And that I would argue that that is more important than the list that they are bringing their role on the team and how that they function within the team. And then how the captain deploys them each and every time. If, if you're in a format where the captain is doing the deploying mm. uh, matters to the success of the team and the teams themselves. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I actually, I'm glad you mentioned that too because that's that's so important in a team event too. Like your your cohesion with each other and just being able to support each other. We, well, the first loss that we had at WTC because we were winning a lot of our games uh, when we went the last time. The first loss we had, we came together so much it meant we could keep we could start winning again because we didn't mm. just like, like the guys that got beat. There was a, they were there were guys that got thrown under the bus. They know it too, and they. They took it like champs, got up, bought a drink for everybody. Like, all right, guys, let's get back up and go again. Like we, that's that's the teammates you want to bring with you because that's what keeps you going. Because even mm. when you win, there are going to be guys on your team that will lose, and they're meant to lose in some cases. They're meant to go into these matchups to take these reds away from other teams. Right? When I say yep. reds, I mean. You guys know what I mean when I say red. Well, you would you take, take a super, <laughs> take out a list that can max or is going to kill anyone that can take out yeah. anyone on the team. So you have to put something up there that wasn't, wasn't already designed to get a lot of points to take them out of the game. Get a basically yeah. foul yeah. them out, you know, kind of yeah. thing. Yep, yeah. exactly. Shack them. Shack them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is, this is just team strategy again, and not, not, uh, not really casting any dispersions on any of this stuff is like this, this list whatever it is, could wreck anyone that we brought. And so we might as well uh, take out somebody from our team that wasn't going to score a lot of points anyway. But there mm. there comes a point where even it, even let, let's say that person got put up there to lose and then they win, all right? They probably really mm-hmm. maxed themselves out, wore themselves down and, and played an amazing game of, of Warhammer 40,000, but they may come out of the other side of it totally drained and got you those five points or whatever, all right? So yeah. you've got to manage that along the course of the how many rounds is this uh this would be a fiver most likely yeah. with, see, with, with, with 20 teams you only need five rounds day three after after your after your night player or your um gene steward occult player no offense uh <laughs> t- took suck down their third loss on you know on saturday <laughs> night yeah spot on uh, so we got we have one you more of these chat you do. You gotta. You gotta pump up your. It's just like any sport. If if your if your teammates have got their head down, you know they're unlikely to play and get those points for you. Um, we got one more of these to talk about, and then we'll transition to some Fugo goodness. Um, but this one, this is the MSU versus durability versus horde. As in, what is each mm-hmm. list leveraging um, as their kind of build around? What's their archetype almost? Um, now straight off the bat, what would you guys assume if I was to say to you, oh, if you had a six six person team, what would you be most likely to see in ninth edition? On ninth edition missions, which one of these would you say have the most density in it? <sighs> if we're see. talking about if we're talking about actually like what the meta is moving towards, I would say MSU. Yeah, that, that's yeah. actually my answer too. But I guess in the yeah. spirit of his question, I'm going to say in that case, uh, Horde. 
Yep. Both are fair. Durability has far and away the most density in it. There are so many teams that are leveraging four, uh, three or four durability lists in their lineup that I was actually quite astounded because right. I thought if I was if I was making my lineup, it would be three MSU, two durability, one horde. And that would so probably be the way I'd what is, uh What is durability in your mind? Dark Angels is obviously in that category, but what else do you consider durability? Death Guard kind of thing? Yes, or just uh, like yeah. some... Some Death Guard builds, some Death Guard builds are in the Horde, some are in the mm -hmm. durability. Um, also, uh, some of the Marine lists that leveraged mm -hmm. uh, more Terminators are not, uh, apart from yep. Dark Angels. Because um, I actually ended up, I think I ended up putting the Death... Uh, no, I didn't. No, I can't remember. It's been too long. Um, <laughs> uh, where the foot, durability... where was the footnote napkin? Yeah, well, so that was actually a sisters list that made it into the durability because I had just had a I had so many vehicles. I had just transports and transports. Sisters, really? Um, same as some... So there was a couple of guard lists that governed the Horde or the durability side. There was one list that had a bunch of Lehman Russes, and I thought that sat more in the durability side than the Horde side. Um, and then there were some, of course, that were in the Horde side, most of the Nids, of course, um, some of the guard. But um, the durability was mostly the, you know, pretty much all of the... I think every single uh, one of the Custodes and every single one of the Dark Angels. So right. 14 of those in the durability ones are just Dark angels and custodies also though some of the t-sons are in there because they're leveraging all that all this dust they're leveraging big termy bricks and leveraging um the bodyguard rules to, to make yep. them non-interactive so that i put them sense. in durability as well okay okay yeah, that makes sense i like that. I, I i see that i see what you're throwing down you're pretty good at this adam i'm not gonna lie uh, am uh, i am i that's, that's good <laughs> yeah no I, I think that's probably the way to go especially you know if going with that if heavier if you lean towards more of the defensive side which i, I do think is yeah. probably the wisest move in this in this environment that we're in right now with all things considered that we've been talking about mm -hmm. look we are we're almost in uh, in bonus time uh, well, Ooh. I figured I figured because we got cut off, we uh, we, we pushed the envelope a little bit. But uh, if if gentlemen, speaking to the question I put to you guys before, if you would have your six man breakdown, Paul, MSU durability horde, just anecdotally, if you could just have any players on the planet, what would you see that breakdown as being optimum for you? Uh, so, so I was thinking more in the in the horde being that durability side of things too, because you know mm -hmm. depending on the terrain layout. But then I I actually did I did at that moment I forgot that the the differing different terrains on uh throughout the matchup thing so i mm. I, th I think more leading more towards the, those bricks those those blocks of you know i want to have a dark angel player with the uh, with all the um the death wing i want to have i want to have 30 blight lords and a, and nine a death shrouds you yeah. know and then and then some you know just basically jumps to, to move around the table and, and perform actions i want to have that and then you know you got to look heavily at um well okay, i guess well you can think custodes I think there's there's yeah. such a kind of a spoiler. And look, you don't you don't have to be th a heretical team. Like you could have you 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 mix and match however you want uh, mm -hmm. with your with your codexes, you know. And then you know even you know things like Admic. You know, I'm a big uh, proponent of the Castellan robots. Like those mm -hmm. things sometimes just wreck shop, and I think they'll even shine even more in one of these types of potentially skewed matchups. <laughs> Actually, there's there's one. Oh, sorry, Dustin. Same question to you, man. And then there's, there's one little anecdote I want to chat about. Yeah, for sure. So for me, I think I'm actually really big on uh, MSU. But as I said before, I think having two Horde-based armies is very, very good in a, a team event because, like I said, there's usually not two armies that can deal with Horde armies. So you're going to get at least one of those Horde armies that's going to just overperform in most yeah. matchups. And the other one, is they're still good at getting points. They're another one of those armies that not, not – not, the same as Dark Angels, but in a different way because they're just hoardy. They can keep the board. They can get their points that way. So I think as long as they're designed that way, I think they're actually really good to do that. So I'd almost, I, I try to keep them split almost two, two and two mm. again with six men. I'm more, I see, I think more of the eight men. That's where I start to skew towards one or the other instead of, uh, yeah, instead of getting all even. But with a six man, I think you need to keep it pretty even because you can get most of the matchups that you're gunning for usually in a six man it's a little when someone puts out and you give him your two you can you can mix both styles yes. to make him give him a little but bit see, of target confusion like you want to exactly. see in a normal game yes but see exactly. here's the thing then you get to the next level of teams and say okay well i've got a two 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 split and i'm going into a team that has a one four one split all of a yeah. sudden half of my boys are sucking eggs and we're not going to do as well as i want them to <laughs> do you know what i mean and so that, it just gets that's it's, what that's i'm hoping for teams. i'm hoping you got no good answers you know whatever. yeah <laughs> that, that's, that's why i love teams because it just gets deeper the oh deeper it's so go. good it's so um, good the biggest trouble i had the 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 in, in in this breakdown, the MSU durability or horde, the one that gave me the most issues with it was the Admech builds. Um, the Admech gave me so many headaches trying to figure out what they're leveraging. Because like the Lucius horde is leveraging durability, but it is a horde list, but it's it's yeah. got a horde amount of models. Um, I love it. But then you can also have the um, the uh, the the Rustalkers car. 
Esque build that isn't you know, has just enough wounds to almost go into the horde category, and it was really hard to do that. And so there's they're kind of there's there's ad make in all three of these in all three of those um, categories. By the way, they made their way well, into every single one of them. And I think that's the only one that I only faction I can say in the game that can play all three of those at kind of the highest level. Um, gentlemen but, yeah. and and listeners, it is time to get to the Fuego Rapido. This is a segment of the show we, we close out almost every show with where we run down a series of topics and uh, we give ourselves two minutes to answer among uh, myself and the panel of what we think uh, the best answer of this is. And so we're going to start right at the, the top, uh, right as pro- we get that timer going. Uh, uh, next yeah, big yeah. Oh, 40K yeah. plot development uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be theater of the mind, fantasy, or what we actually think it is, but Dustin, go for it. Oh, if we're, see, it matters if we're going to go what we think it is or what we actually... Okay, you know what? I'm no wrong go answers with, here. Uh, there are no wrong answers. GSC are coming, man. And you know who they're going to be coming with? They're going to be coming with somebody else. I feel like all the new stuff that's coming is starting to be kind of themed a little bit. I want to say they would come with Guard because it's GSC, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Well, which well, thought, which faction of the guard? That's oh, jeez! I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna paint you into this corner. You're painting me right in that corner. Which <laughs> faction? Yeah, I can. Katachin. No, oh, I don't know. That's... Oh, so, cross the line, how, Mister. How, how, how you you pushed me in the corner, man. This is you did this to yourself. I know. <laughs> you so, okay, yourself. okay, guys, guys, guys. Our man in the production booth just put something hilarious together. So, <laughs> in the fluff, Tyranids ate and destroyed the squats. What if Ooh. they got regurgitated as gene stealer cults and sent off into the galaxy and squats start seeding worlds everywhere? I, uh, I am not a range. dwarf fan. So I don't, I don't, I like I wanna, eating them. I don't like respawning them. <laughs> I'm going to go with the, we finally get confirmation that the emperor is dead. Yes. The Astronomicon really, is being that. powered by two uh, D cell batteries from the 21st century because <laughs> uh, there was just a stockpile because nothing takes D cells anymore. Uh, and yep. and that is what the Astronomicon is. And uh, let's see. I don't know who who takes his place because uh, it can't be Gilliman. Um, It'd be Tiggy. Know. They, they yeah. do some stupid Smurf stuff and somehow Tigerius is powerful enough to power the Golden Throne while the Emperor regens. Yeah, that that could that could be it. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, that, that you know that's we'll see. That's it. Uh, okay, <laughs> here we go. Here's a segment we have: uh, uh, kiss, marry, and kill one of the Chaos Gods. That really limits <laughs> the choices here. This one. <laughs> yeah, baby. Four. <laughs> I wrote this from... one in. Uh, it's not. It's not going to be good. Nothing good is going to come from this. The these answers. Uh, what you got, uh, Adam? All right. All right. All right. I think. I think. I'd kiss Zench because it's the least. I'm, not, I'm there for the least amount of time for Zench to do changey shenanigans on me. So the shortest interaction with Zench. Um, I'd probably marry Nurgle because I think you know it'd be a good time. You'd be happy. You'd be play the long apart, game, right? But uh... happy about it. And you'd either oh, the temptation of Slanesh would always be there, so I'd I'd kill them, so I wouldn't cheat on Nurgle. Mm. <laughs> Dustin, you would take a swing at this uh, perilous topic. Sure. You know what? I would kiss Nurgle because I feel like they need love too. I would. I would marry Zinch because you're getting used to being changed when you get married anyway. That's that's something you just got to get used to. So it makes Ooh, sense logic. to me. Right. And uh, I'd kill corn because that's what they want. They want yeah. blood. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to same answer for me, except Slanesh in the, in the kiss category. Uh, and then you, yeah, with marrying uh, Zinch, because you're right, it is growth and change, but it's persistence. It doesn't go away. It never oh, expires. It's just always yeah. there. Uh, and then you then you have to kill corn because, look, that's where it's going to end anyway, and that is what they would want. You can tell which of the th- which two of the three of us are actually married, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty plain at this point. It's pretty, it's pretty plain, yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's go go to the next one. Most underrated faction in competitive 40k, and why is it Gene Sealer Cults? Dustin. <laughs> you 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 just you already knew my answer. Gene Sealer Cult is so, so <laughs> underrated. You guys understand blips. Do you understand cutters, Goliaths? Guys, I'm when I can go to GTs again, I am gonna bring my GC. I'm gonna show all of you. All of you are gonna see 
Gene Sear color is so underrated. I won't even I won't even ally in Tyranids. I'll just bring Gene Sear Sir That's it. Straight. Look, I think there's a, there's a lot of play there with uh, there's with so some, much play. Yeah, and it, I've been practicing. I've been practicing a pure list, and it has not lost yet. I, I do I do think that it is underplayed uh, by the the people that can make it happen on tournament day deeper in the rounds of the tournament. Now, so yes. I'll gi- I'll give you that. I'll give it you is that a very hard army to keep playing deeper in. It's for sure. Yep. You need like it needs so much practice. It is not an easy one to pick up and play. I don't I'm want to take gonna, up too much more time though. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm going to jump in and say uh, Astro Militarum. I, I think that they are right now undervalued. On the tournament scene, I think that they struggle a little bit. You do need some luck with them, uh, but they since they get the same weapons that are that are performing in uh, very well in other uh, factions, you could find that right mix and maybe do something with them. I um I echo I echo both of your statements, and for the same reason, I think it takes a lot of resilience as a player to play both those factions. You have to just be okay with like having a dustpan next to you and just like sweeping up your models every turn, because that's how many you're going to be losing. And you have to hold the line, have a good plan, and not falter in the face of like unwavering pressure. But I'm going to say knights. I'm going to say knights are actually quite underrated at the moment. I think people are looking at them and still think they're a gatekeeper. Where I think knights are, especially on some of the new terrain formats we're seeing when wtc was the prevalent terrain format knights couldn't exist they just couldn't be a thing but things with like what uh, gw did Three in orlando seconds. knights are extremely potent on that board and can do a lot of things there we go that's it so worst hobby tips i'm going to lead off with this which is actually a hobby tip but also probably the worst hobby tip <laughs> uh, that i can think of anyway is never change out your blade on your exacto knife <laughs> dude i have one sitting next to me i don't think i've changed the blade in like never like three years i hear i hear stories of anytime anyone change it it's like instant twitter pic of cutting themselves so yeah, the, the, yeah. the secret is never never changing no, <laughs> I'm I'm sure not. do not take any any safety hobby tips from me that's <laughs> we are in the in the it. category of worst hobby tips and, uh, <laughs> yeah, gotta, gotta make sure time. we know everybody knows that this is the worst hobby tips yeah this is <laughs> Uh, anybody got another one? What you what you got, Adam? Uh, go ahead, Adam. Um, using el- elastic bands and hot water to try and fix uh, resin sculpts. Uh, I had a good I had a good friend of mine at the time who had a beautiful Stormbird. I, I think it was a Stormbird um, from from uh, Games Workshop, and but it was warped, of course. And so he put a bunch of elastic bands over it, and then dipped it in hot water, um, and then thinking the elastic bands would you know just pop it into shape. And instead, what they did was suck the whole thing in and created like a a tourniquet over the whole so model and it was heat real. guns heat guns are very are, are one of the things you could, also worst hobby tips because you 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 gotta be you gotta you gotta be super careful uh there's uh oh there's all kind of bad hobby there's all kind of things that so um cha- not changing out your paint water after you use metallics, metallics. from mm. so another worst hobby tip would be um, I sometimes try to do the quick dip strategy. Like I try to just get in mm-hmm. before the metallic can get on my brush yep. uh, and then get out. Although, look, I think that's only good. That only means something to good painters. Like I can get by. <laughs> no one's going to be like, I think there's a dot of metallic uh, bolt gun metal in this, Paul. So you're not going to get your 10 points or whatever it is. No one's looking at that for me. <laughs> so, no, definitely not. I, I could probably do this whole two minutes and we're sorry, just two you seconds. Know, oh, in your paints. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Thinking Perfect. Thinking your paints is a trap. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Thinking your paints is a trap. We, uh, we have a topic here. Perfect Grey Knight list. Uh, we got some free coaching for the pr- producer of the show. Uh, Perfect Grey Knight. I mean, I've, I've got it figured out. Oh, you, Paul just knows it. He's yeah, I just know it. it. Look, you want at least three Dread Knights. Uh, you want uh, some, Ooh. you want three Rhinos. You want at least one unit of incept- Interceptors. And then fill the rest in with strike squads. And if you have any points left, you're not going to go wrong throwing a dread like a regular old dreadnought in there. Oh, you mean like sword bears? Yeah, like not. some good uh, reroll. I agree with everything else. Sorry. Well, okay, <laughs> okay. You, you want we, we can disagree about 80 points in a list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I actually think that paladins are underrated. I think one squad of paladins because I actually do work in. Uh, the gray knights and then a lot of strike squads they're they're just they're just money interceptor squads always good i don't think you need a lot of the grand masters i think one or two is enough i honestly do i think a purgation squad or two is actually pretty good too for less points than a strike squad you're getting a lot of shooting uh, are you speaking in, in 
like a dread knights or do you mean specifically grandmasters i mean specifically grandmasters okay dread dread knights i still i feel like you don't you don't need a lot of them though i think I, they're good but i don't think you need a lot of them the infantry are where it's at strike squads interceptors purgation you're doing that insidious thing because dread knights really kill gene sealer cults <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm kidding. Okay. Okay. I'm planning. I'm planning for this. I'm planning. So, best one for me is two detachments. One Dread Knight, but also has a Drago, a Libby, and a Chappie, because I feel like that combination uh, of four yeah. HQs mm -hmm. is the way to go. I feel, feel like you need those four HQs to activate everything. And then it is a uh, min, minimum of two strikes if you're doing two patrol, or four if you're going battalion patrol. And then I'm thinking 20 in interceptors is my minimum. I like 20. You can just do that. You can do that 777, 10, 10, or you know, 5, 5, 10, whatever you want to do. And then I like two units of purgation squads. And whatever yeah. you do with those is pretty much up to you you um but i actually don't mind a unit of 10 purgations um with either side cannons or silences just depending on what your meta is and then i think purifiers are my underrated choice in there i actually think purifiers are quite good uh, and people should look at them more often i like y'all's idea much more nuanced than mine i've uh, i think those are that's probably right going to give you lots of uh, of uh, tricks to pull off mm. yeah all right last one uh pj's not here so uh why noise marines are awful <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't <laughs> you should hate them for being in a kind of thing <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry I, I didn't know where that one was going uh, anyway, let's just, let's just read say, whatever's you know, on the prompter yeah why uh, why noise marines are bad uh okay uh they have no rent on their guns so they're terrible into so many lists in the meta that they only really get activated against like hordes and stuff that has low save or no uh, damage mitigation. Like you think about noise marines into death guard and like some dark angels and custodies lists, and they're just not a thing. They're just not a thing at all. Um, but do you know why they're awful? It's because they use noise. Like they wield noise. What is that? Grow up. You know, your opponent's wearing headphones. Oh, I guess I, I guess I'm useless on this battlefield. It's like, you know, down grow up no they're literally just walking up to their opponents just smashing pans together at them that's all yeah. they're doing, they're, they're, firing they're, doing guns. Some, they're doing some sweet licks on their thing and the guy's <laughs> just like i'm into classical music dun, 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 dead you know yeah, who dies to that i never go to yeah. a metallica concert and died i've been to a lot oh, of those no. I, 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 they go back to a bad and why'd you lose this one? Oh, they had good earphones bosh we couldn't, we couldn't <laughs> yeah they're, they're, they're plugs on they had noise cancel they had plugs. Oh, no, they had plugs on sorry <laughs> <laughs> all right well, someone else someone else talk <laughs> like, okay, I can tell you why. Because it's over twenty points for a one moon model. Ooh, mic drop. Little, 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 you little gotta, you gotta be committed. Although I th they do get to shoot, you know, when they die, so it's almost like, like you get, you know, Paul, double efficiency. This is why they're bad? Not why they're I know, good. I know. Oh, I'm gonna go because they don't all have the cool mohawks from the limited model put out. That's a good That's reason. Legit. That's they don't all have that. platforms. If they all had yeah. platforms, I'd I'd be down. I yeah, think. and and I'm really I do miss their guitars that they had in previous editions. Uh, yeah. Even the, the you know the Blastmasters or whatever were just, I mean, epic. I want to see somebody that completely converts a noise marine just to like a stomp performance. If you ever been to yeah. that show. I am still waiting for somebody to have uh, the goth rockers on their display board next to the noise Marines as like their chaos oh, familiars. Oh yeah. yeah. That would be sick. Yeah. Well folks, that is the end of our show. Thanks for everyone that tuned in live and participated in the chat. That means so much to us as we're going through this and running through these, some of these, ultimately very silly topics. So thank you for indulging us as well. Uh, please consider leaving us a five-star review, sh sharing or subscribing if you have not already. Click a bell. I don't know what you're supposed to do on which platform you're looking, but hit a star, hit a bell, hit a like, hit a subscribe, leave a comment. That is how other, it's a completely like hassle-free way that other people can, can be aware of our show and maybe join in and make the chat even more live. If we're going to be here every week talking about the biggest and the best and the grandest of all grand tournaments each and every weekend that comes. This is the Thursday show. Welcome Anybody else got anything you want to add before we wrap up? Woo! No, thanks for the support. Thursday show. Been amazing. See you next week. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>